Hey everybody, this is Dan Baranowski from Mystic Frequency Sound Design, and today I'm looking at Soundweaver from Boom Library. Soundweaver is a sound design tool built for efficiency and creativity by utilizing your existing sound design libraries and compiling sound effects into unique combinations based on search criteria and randomization functionality. Even though it's a Boom Library product, it works with any sound effects library, so it's not proprietary just to Boom Library sound effects. When you launch the application, the first thing you see is this project dashboard. The way that the dashboard works is it prompts you for a, a file name and for your sample rate and bit depth. In this case, we are going to call this Big Jump Scare. And the reason we're making a jump scare sound is because I work in the haunted attractions industry. And this type of sound effect is one of the most common that I end up building for my customers. A lot of these attractions have jump scare moments where a, an actor will press a trigger, some sort of physical trigger within their set that will play a sound effect so that when they jump out to scare the guest, it will uh, enhance that scare. It makes it more cinematic. It makes it bigger. Ultimately, the goal is to uh, immerse the guest more, and audio plays a big part in that. Now, when you create your project, the first thing you're prompted for from there are groups. Groups are groups of sound effects that you want to search for. So it uses a keyword. There's metadata options, path name options, word match options. There's also ex exclude options. So you can exclude certain words from your search. Below that, there's a layers option. The layers option is how many tracks you want based on that keyword to be stacked in the session. So because we're doing a jump scare, I know I want kind of a reverse sound leading into an impact sound that'll uh, create a nice uh, impact moment to scare our guest. So I know based on my library that I'm targeting, which is the Boom Library Cinematic Horror Library, that there are some good reversed kind of build-up sounds. And I also want my impact, my hit sound. So I want three layers of each. When I have that typed in, I click randomize. The application scans the library for those specific search criteria, and it generates this sort of uh, file layout for us within the user interface. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that there's several kind of file variations from left to right, and they're stacked on top of each other. Um, the first being kind of brought into focus. And what that is, is the software recognizing that each of these files has several iterations of the sound effect. And it's breaking the file up into each iteration and stacking them for us. So if you have a sound design library that, let's say it's, it's gunshots, and it creates a single file with a shot, um, every few seconds, different variations. The software will recognize those different sound effects in that one long file and break it up for you. The next thing that it's going to try to do is line up those files with hit points, which is this little black bar you see here. So you can drag this to tell the software where it should align the files based on where it falls in the waveform. So we have this first variant right here. Let's take a listen to what Soundweaver created for us as a stacked element by just doing a search. So that sounds pretty good already. There are a few things that we'll want to pay attention to based on our settings that are given to us in the user interface. First of all is overall volume. So we're stacking a bunch of impact sounds. That's going to clip our output. So we want to drop our master output down a little bit, which you can see down here at the bottom of the screen. We also have control over gain for our individual groups, which you can see right here. So 
I know I want to pull down the gain of my uh, reverse group quite a bit because I want the impact to hit hard. So I want the build into it to be quieter. Now, the other thing that I want to do is reduce the gain of my impact group so I don't clip the output of that particular group. And you can see metering next to each of the groups here, along with some other functionality like uh, pitch changing and uh, randomization of timing and pitch for the group itself. Each track has its own set of these settings as well. So you can solo, um, you can lock things, you can randomize things. You can also control gain, pan, and pitch for each individual track. If you didn't like a particular track, you could click this dice icon on it, and it will search your library for another track that meets your search criteria and load it into your session. You can do the same on a per group basis or on the entire session. So if you didn't like what sound was compiled for you uh, based on the elements right off the bat, you can re-randomize, and it'll just grab another uh, collection of sounds. So I have my group uh, volume set appropriately. I've set my hit points appropriately for my first uh, variation. Now let's move to the second variation and let's do the same. So I can press these buttons down here at the bottom, these arrows, and cycle through my variations and easily create multiple versions of a similar sound so that tonally I'm in the same realm, but I'm getting uh, additional options to work with based on what the files give me. Now this is important to me because as people walk through these haunted attractions, we don't want them to hear the same sound effect over and over. And if we have a few of these jump scare moments, the more we do that, the more variance I want because I don't want people to uh, subconsciously hear this same sound over and over again and get pulled out of the experience. The small changes and variations of the, of the sound effect increase immersion and uh, people's ear won't pick up on that as easily and it'll seem more realistic in the long run. So there's another button down here at the bottom that says shuffle variations. And what that does is after you set your hit points, if you wanted to, you could stack the layers in a different order by pressing shuffle variations. And what that'll do is it'll reorder these different variations uh, to give you new and uh, more unique combinations than what you were originally given. So it's a pretty cool uh, way of keeping things fresh within an existing set of sounds by giving you more options. Sometimes when you're doing a search and it breaks up these files, it may not set the hit points and uh, the breaks in the file, the splits in the file in the appropriate places. They give you some menu options on how to fix that when that comes up. So you can right click on any region and split it to create multiple regions from that. You can also adjust a threshold that determines where it finds the splits in the region. So if you have a dynamic file with some loud sounds and some quiet sounds, you can adjust that threshold down to make sure it's splitting the files in the appropriate place. So now I have uh, six variations of this jump scare sound. So let's listen to a couple of them so you can hear the subtle differences between them. Let's listen to the next one. Very cool. So we're going to jump forward towards the end here. There's uh, This is an example of one of those reverse sound effects that's a little too long for my buildup. So I have the ability to shorten that from right here within the user interface by selecting these little black triangles on the file, on the waveform. So if I click this black triangle, I can drag it over this way and I can make a shorter buildup. I can also do the same as a fade out if I wanted to, 
by clicking the triangle on this side and dragging that way. So you can fix uh, files that need to be faded in or out pretty quickly just by doing kind of a drag, just like we did there. So let's hear how these two sound. And the last one. So I really like all these variations of the sound and now I'm ready to export them into Pro Tools to pull them into my master session for my attraction. The way that we do this is pretty easy. I have Pro Tools running in the background here and there's this export section in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, it has two menus. Uh, there's a menu that says mix down groups and tracks and there's a menu that says random variations, snapshots or current variations. So if I want a stereo mix down of this current variation, all I have to do is click prepare for drag and drop and this little hand will light up and I can just drop it right into Pro Tools. And there's my stereo mix down of these six elements stacked the way that I want it. Now, if I want more control over what gets exported, I could switch this to groups. And now it's gonna create a stereo file for each group and it's going to time align them automatically for me. So you could see what that looks like here. You have your reverse and you have your impact and it's time aligned perfectly. That way you don't have to manually do this. Lastly, you have individual track exports. So now we'll have six stereo tracks, one for each sound effect. If I really want to dive in and get really granular with my export here, which as you can see, uh, still time aligned and all the files have the same start and end point. So everything uh, is easy to edit and manipulate if we want to from there. Now, the most exciting part of this is actually the ability to export random variations for me. And the reason is, like I said, as people walk through this attraction, we don't want the same sound effect over and over. We want uh, a few variations of that. So I could say, give me six variations of these sounds and allow me to pick the three I like most. Um, when I choose prepare for drag and drop, it's going to scan all the variations and it's going to randomize them and it's going to create a mix down of six different versions of that sound. And now all I have to do is go through audition them and pick the three I like the most. And now my sound design for that particular element is complete. And not only did we do that within a few minutes here, the length of this video, but we got a bunch of different variations, more than we actually needed uh, out of the software by importing and setting some hit points. So where this is uh, really valuable for me is in efficiency. Um, efficiency for me is kind of everything, especially when it comes to uh, the time of year that these attractions open. We have to create a lot of design elements and we don't want to manually import sound effects one by one align them, edit them, create random variations of them by copying and pasting and realigning. You have to worry about gain staging and fade-ins and fade-outs and all that. Now you can do all that from within this one tool, which for me is going to be a huge time saver. This software allows me to import elements, randomize and edit elements, and export elements in a super efficient and user-friendly way. I highly recommend it for anyone needing to do sound design. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe. You'll find more demos, reviews, and tips and tricks for attraction sound design. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments. Thanks again.